Okay guys, so um, a bit of a, a brief video on changing the calipers. This side now has the new uh, stripped, cleaned and what have you caliper on as you can see I'm in the process of bleeding the brakes and I'm just going to show you a little tip regarding bleeding the brakes um, as a in a solo fashion if you don't have a handy friend to pump the brake pedal for you so just to go through the procedure of changing them you've got these two bolts here which are for your sliding pins 14 millimeter undo these slide them out and then you can lift this away loosen off the banjo bolt there first which shouldn't be too tight it's a fairly soft metal it's made of copper uh, so you don't want to tighten this too tightly when you when you refit it but you need do need to make sure it has the copper washer on which is a double sided goes on both sides of the banjo and then the tricky ones are these which are 17 mil top and bottom which hold the actual mounting plate this bit here that the pins go into um, I could have just swapped this bit but my old one which is over here has some um, deformation which hopefully you can see on the bottom there which is where it had to be heated at the garage because the pins had seized in so that had to have quite a bit of heat applied to it to free it off and as you can see it's got some def deformation on there and it's cracked so to uh, that's the banjo bolt incidentally and that is half of the washer that's that should be a double-sided washer which goes e either side of the banjo um, so yeah, that's why I wanted to change the whole thing. So these 17 mil bolts, they'll be very, very tight. What I had to use to remove these was a, um, a 17 mil socket and a breaker bar with an extension. You can see it's actually bent the bar there. So it does need quite a bit of force. Um, but then, you know, it is just performing an important function. It's, it's holding your brake caliper onto, uh, onto your car there. So, um, if you want to change those, two bolts, very tight. Once you've got them cracked off though, they come out very easily. And then it's just a case of bolting the plate back on, fitting the pads to one to this side um, on the mounting plate, one to this side on the caliper, uh, with a little bit of copper grease on the backs of the pads, anti-squeal, sort of uh, and seize and squeal compound. And then some silicone grease on the sliding pins, slide them in bolt them up what i'm going to do once i've bled these is just slacken these off and put a little dab of whoops uh, this stuff which is uh, lithium molly grease um or you could use copper grease on the threads just the threads though not the actual sliding portion that needs the silicone grease um <clears throat> Remember to keep a check on your brake fluid. You need the cap off the brake fluid. That's low at the moment because I've been in the process of bleeding this. And as it's getting low, top it up with the recommended fluid for your car. In this case, dot three, and yours might be dot four or five or five point one or what have you. But <clears throat> make sure you check and do that. What I'm going to do now is just show you a little, a little tip regarding the um, bleeding. Right, hopefully I've got this positioned in such a way that it will capture everything I need to. What you need to do is get yourself to your local vet's surgery and ideally it needs to be one that deals with livestock because you need yourself one of these, uh, a huge, huge, massive syringe. And these are used along with this tube here for feeding of, uh, of calves, lambs, that kind of thing, if they need to be hand fed. And it comes with a tube with a little hole in the end which emulates a teat. What you need to do is just chop the tube off at the end and you might need to heat it a little bit so it will fit over your bleed nipple. And then this end fits onto the syringe like so. And you've basically got yourself um, a, a, a cheap budget together uh, Mighty Vac vacuum system. So slacken off your bleed nipple and then if you pull and hold the syringe what you'll see there is you've created a vacuum and this will draw fluid through the tube and into the syringe so you basically do this until you're drawing clean air free fluid through you can see there's a lot of bubbles there yet. 
at the same time keeping an eye on your brake fluid level and topping it up as required. At this point I've not pressed the pedal to settle the pads onto the disc, that comes after I'm happy with the bleeding. And what I'm going to do is pull quite a bit through here because I want fresh fluid to be coming through anyway. Uh, clean, fresh, new out of the bottle fluid. So. so the bubbles are getting less there as you can see. Nip that off. Just take that off from there and squeeze out the fluid. These are quite cheap. Um, I think it's two or three pounds for the syringe in the feeding tube and you get a couple of tubes in the pack. The rubber in there probably won't last up too much, so after you've done this, you'll need to take it out, give it a good clean if you want to reuse it. But being so cheap, it's not such a huge problem. So uh, so there you go. And then you just keep repeating that until you've got clean, clear fluid coming through. Obviously you need a jar or something to put the old fluid in as you bleed it through, uh, which actually looks surprisingly clean, cleaner than I expected it to. Um, and. Uh, and then settle the pads on and just check for pedal feel. So, whoops. thanks for watching that. Hope it was useful and we'll see you in the next video.